Serious, people who've experienced the paranormal or seen cryptids and other unknown creatures, what's your story? As an officer on a reservation, we kept getting reports of a tall man at different places in a town on our reservation. One night we was able to catch him on a thermal camera. There was about 8 to 10 officers there. It was on a hill overlooking the town that was right below. What did it look like? Tall, about 8 to 9 feet tall. Long dark hair. Human face. Really fast and quick. We sent officers that was in the town over to where it was walking towards a housing and we could see the officer get out and cross a fence and look with his flashlight but it looked like the figure was in a slight ravine to his side and couldn't see it. We was giving directions on radio but our portable radios sucked and unless you was right next to your unit, they wouldn't work. We watched as the tall figure walked right down the middle of the street and we could hear all the dogs in the housing start freaking out. It then walked out of sight. When I was a child, my niece who my parents adopted after her parents died, would tell us about nightmares she had about a clown living in our airing cupboard, from UK, you could call it a boiler room. We always just thought it was bad dreams obviously. My partner on one of the times she slept at my mother's house Ahe told me she was having dreams of a clown living in the airing cupboard. No idea how to explain that one. After my father passed away, I went to live with my friend and his mom for a little while. Things with my mom were very strained and I didn't want to stay at my friend's house initially. But they didn't want me alone during that time. Staying at anyone's house always made me feel uneasy for some reason. My first night there, early in the morning I woke up to the sound of my bedroom door opening and a gentleman wearing a red flannel and bib denim overalls came into my room holding a bag of tools. He turned the light on, looked at me and walked through another doorway to the utility room. Soon after, I fell asleep again. But when I woke up this time, room was dark. Everything was the same when I went to sleep the night previously. Figuring I imagined the whole thing I went upstairs for coffee and asked my friend's mom if the guy with the overalls is still here. With a weird look, she informed me that it's been her and I in the house all night. At this point, I'm very confused. So I explain detail in detail about what the man looked like. Height, weight, clothes, facial hair. Everything. She turns pale white and bolts to her room and retrieves a photo. When she shows me the photo, it's the man I saw in the basement that morning. Even wearing the same clothes. She tells me that he passed away 30 years ago. It was her grandpa who owned the property previously. He had killed himself to save the farm when he invested his money into horses instead of machines and his investment flopped. To keep the bank from taking the farm. On a stormy night he took a lightning rod into the middle of a pond and nature took his life when lightning struck the rod. Because of this, life insurance paid out, and his suicide saved the family diary and kept the house from being foreclosed on. One more from the hospital prison wing. So there's these two rooms, I'll say 123 and 234, and they share a wall. The hospital isn't that old, built in the 70s, and it's a small town county hospital. We don't take trauma cases and when one does come in, it's only to stabilize them until life flight or EMS can transfer them to another facility. Deaths in room are usually older people and natural causes. The prison wing has been rolling for eight years or so and the prisoners who come in, if they die, it's natural causes. But this one room set, it's just weird. I'm agnostic atheist, but I can't deny the same thing keeps happening in 123 and especially 234. There's a kid. There's been several times, right before they pass, the inmate talks about a kid in the room. But it's the ones who are delirious before death. Also there have been several mentally altered offenders, not drug addled but actual mental status, who have have talked about or completely lost their shit over the kid that was under their bed, or running around, and fucking with them. One guy became so violent we had to discharge him from the hospital and back to his unit, not solely over the kid, 
but it seemed like a part of the problem. Occasionally an inmate with full mental capacity would mention the TV in another room was so loud sometimes he could hear it, said it sounded like a kid's show or something with kids talking. I kept my hallway quiet and made sure I couldn't hear the TVs in the hall. There's certainly arguments that can be made that word of mouth got back to the units about the kid's story, but neither officers nor nurses made a habit of telling stories to inmates. Besides we admit offenders from dozens of units. My dad had shit going on in his house, so much shit that almost every kid who would come in, myself, my sisters, my brother and my dad have all had multiple experiences in there. I remember one time, I was going upstairs to have a shower. The bathroom was the end of the hallway and on the way to it, I had to pass by the room I shared with my sisters when I was over for the weekends. As I passed by, I seen something sit up on the bottom bunk, we had bunk beds in there, out of the corner of my eye. This thing looked like a little girl. She had pale skin, short black hair that was cut in a bob style with straight bangs covering her forehead, and her eyes were these massive circles with large black dots in the center for pupils. She was facing sideways so her right shoulder was facing me when she turned her head, the other half of her body looked like it was under the blankets. I remember getting such an intense feeling of fear that I went back downstairs and refused to go upstairs at all or even sleep in the house. My dad had to set up the camping tent in the backyard for the rest of the weekend. If this occurrence had been nothing slash me just seeing things that weren't there, I feel like I shouldn't still remember it in perfect detail at the age I am now, seen it when I was maybe 6 or so. I'm 23 now. When I was about 14 my family had just moved to a house in the suburbs where there was a lot of open space and the house had a huge backyard. One night about 2200 hours I opened our sliding door to take out the trash and I saw two figures walking towards the house. The best way I could describe them is they were all black, slim almost looked and moved like kangaroos, but I was living in New Jersey and they don't exist in that area. Also they were walking four-footed, but when I opened the door and turned on the light they stood up on two feet and began to run. Now I turned and shut the door before I completely saw them run but I got a good enough glance to know this wasn't any regular animal like a deer. And besides there was never any deer in that neighborhood so this was definitely something different. Still creeps me out over 15 years ago. If this occurrence had been nothing slash me just seeing things that weren't there, I feel like I shouldn't still remember it in perfect detail at the age I am now, seen it when I was maybe 6 or so. I'm 23 now. I was working at a summer camp in the PNW one year. On the second or third night there, I was jogging alone back from the staff campfire to the cabin, where the campers and my co-counselor slept. I'm walking in this big grassy throughway that has some taller reeds separating it from a shore of the Puget Sound. It's probably 2 a.m. Full moon. As I'm jogging I see this person in the reeds. It's wearing a white gown, and it has no face, just hair. I only notice it because, as I approached it, it stood up from a crouched position, backed up joltily a few steps, then crouched down again, but I could still see it crouching there, like it was waiting. Its movements told me that it was not human. My knees gave out, and I felt flooded with fear as I collapsed. I tried to run back to my cabin but my legs would. Not. Work. I crawled and scrambled there on all fours. I tried to scream but no sound came out. Just gasping. I finally got to my cabin and fumbled with the doorknob for what felt like a minute before I could open it. I closed the door and stood there waiting for a while inside. I didn't hear anything, but I barely slept. At some point later that night I remember laughing, thinking oh, it was just one of the campers peeing. I was hysterically laughing at myself for like 20 minutes, then fell asleep. Next morning though, I realized that no campers returned to the cabin that could have potentially been out there peeing that night. I asked all of them, and all of them said they hadn't gone out to pee the previous night. I'll add that this was a camp that was overtly for non-religious, skeptically minded staff and campers, of which I was and still largely am, 
but I have no explanation for what I saw that night. Still scares the shit out of me just typing this. I went to work and saw my dead child. It was 6 in the morning and I went to work, as I went in, I heard rustling in the trash. It was pitch black. I went round there just thinking it was a raccoon because we usually get them but no, it was much worse. My child had died from cancer but I wasn't at the hospital when he died. As I looked in the trash I saw a corpse and it was literally my child, not alive, dead. My dead child in the trash outside 711 isn't out of the ordinary. That was two years ago and I've needed therapy ever since to make sure I'm not going crazy. When my youngest son was about three years old we were eating out in town and he got a bit restless. I decided to take him for a walk and as I held the door open he got away from me and made a break for it, pedestrian area so safe, he bolted into an adjacent site which had a ruined chapel slash almshouses with info boards for tourists. I found him staring up at the chapel ruins. What are you doing, mate? His reply, a long time ago I got married here what? A long time ago. Then a switch flicked he was a three-year-old with energy to burn and was off running again. Shook me to my core. So back in the early 2000s right up near McCall, Idaho me, 16, and my buddy Tyler, 16, were up in the mountains pretty far from any sort of actual civilization. We were up camping with my family and I brought him along. After about day two or three days we had the bright idea to go out on a night exploration. Bad idea. Anyway we didn't tell my parents and just left at about two o'clock in the morning, we were sleeping in a separate tent so sneaking out was easy. We were probably about 20 to 30 minutes into our so-called night exploration and we were decently far from camp. Around this time I started to get an uneasy feeling. I told Tyler that we should probably head back because it was pretty cold and I didn't want to admit I was freaking out. He insisted that we go on and that I should stop being a baby. I agreed. After about 10 more minutes into our night exploration I shined my light into a little clearing of the trees. I thought I saw a tall dark figure with very long lanky legs, a strange shaped body, and no arms. I wasn't too sure what it was and told Tyler we should go a little closer. We did and found this large 12-ish foot tall thing staring right at us both from about 20 feet away. When I tell I have never run faster in my life I mean it. And after the run back to camp my legs were torn apart and bloodied by all the dead branches and whatnot. We had to sleep in my parents tent the rest of the trip. I moved into a bungalow when I was 11 and my older brother and I knew something was wrong with the house. For months into living there, my mom left my younger cousin and I at home to go grocery shopping. We both were on the computer on the upper floor when we heard the second entry door in the basement open and the sound of heavy boots stomping. I assumed my dad had come home and we heard the shower running. We didn't think anything of it until I realized the shower had been running well over half an hour. I went to go check and the back door was completely open and all the lights were still off in the basement except for the bathroom light. The door was open too and our shower was on, with no one in it. It was one of those detachable heads and it was swinging wildly behind a drawn curtain. I quickly turned the water off and called out to my dad in the darkness. I even went up the stairs from the basement door thinking he could be in the backyard and forgot he left the water running. The car wasn't there and I went to the living room area of the basement thinking he fell asleep. The door to the cold room was open and I had a very bad feeling and went upstairs and tried to remain calm and tell my cousin that no one was home but the shower turned on. We're Asian, so ghosts and all the spooky stuff is something we grew up believing. I thought he wouldn't believe me but he got scared and waited outside on the porch for my mom to come. There were many more instances of ghostly encounters in that home but my whole life I've had other occurrences and people who say they have a third eye tell me weird things or say I'm sensitive to that realm as well. I don't scare easily but I remember that specific time I didn't have an explanation and I was genuinely scared. If you guys want more stories, those stomping boots make a comeback almost 8 years later. 
This happened to me when I was six. I was in my bed sound asleep when I felt the mattress beside me slowly shift as if someone was laying beside me. I opened my eyes and there was a full-grown adult woman beside me. She wasn't particularly scary, just normal looking but she was a strange person in my bed. Of course I opened my mouth to scream but before I did she put her finger to her lips as if to tell me to be quiet. Her eyes looked very frightened and she seemed to be silently pleading for me to keep quiet. Of course I screamed my guts out and I heard my parents getting up out of their bed. The strange woman just looked very sad, her eyes were full of tears. Dad turned my bedroom light on and as soon as he did she just wasn't there anymore. No sign of her at all. I slept in my parents' room that night. I was very scared but even more so I had a deep feeling of sadness. That was decades ago and I still remember it clearly. I've had a few run-ins like that, different people though, never that same woman. I have a really creepy one. So, my cousin, around 30 years old, had a baby and had one of those baby monitors, with video feed. She was at the living room with her sister, watching TV. Her sister gets up to go to kitchen, swings by the baby monitor to take a look at the baby, and goes white. She slowly walks up to the mother and says there is a grown-up woman, with a white dress, holding the baby. They were both alone in the house. They both go running into the bedroom, only to find the baby in the crib and everything closed. To this day, the sister never forgot what she saw in the monitor. My first year of university a girl I lived with had her friend over one night. He'd been shooting footage on London Bridge at 3 a.m. to get some shots of it abandoned at night. He was really riled up about something and insisted we watch it with the audio up all the way and listen closely. Around the one minute mark I heard a low, deeply menacing voice whisper slowly, as you walk the devil's path, then something unintelligible, then, death. It felt so final and evil. He turned to us and said, did you hear it? I said I'd heard a voice. What did it say? I told him what I'd heard. His face went white. You heard the exact same thing as me. You're not the first. My housemate said she'd heard the same thing as well. He hadn't heard the voice when he was on the bridge, only when he was working on the audio, but he'd shown it to other people who had heard the same thing. I don't really have any other paranormal encounters so this one might not stand out, but I'm generally wary of paranormal shit and this still scared me. There was some sort of presence on that bridge at night. It wanted to make itself known. I don't ever want to know what it was. I've told this story before but while my husband and I were driving through the middle of nowhere Nevada in the middle of the night, we swore we saw a gargoyle or something fly across the highway. It had a huge wingspan, two arms, and two legs. We only saw it for a second as it crossed in front of our car but we both saw the same thing. It could have been some sort of massive bat I guess but gargoyle was definitely what came to mind. I come home from work one day and was coming up the stairs to the bedroom to change. I see my wife walk naked out of the spare bedroom into our room. She was probably three feet away from me. I followed her into the room asking, what are you doing creeping around naked? As I turn the corner and step into our room she isn't there. That's when I heard the shower running. She was taking a shower. I have no idea how I seen this but when I started trying to gather what I saw she was beautiful and glowing like a hazy glow. I have seen other things in my life, one in this house, but nothing like this. I started to think maybe her soul was coming back to her or that she might be losing it. I don't know how to explain it to this day. I had a friend that lived at some apartments down the street from me. I went over, he answered and was like he have a seat, I got use the bathroom. I'm like cool, so I'm sitting there watching TV for 20 minutes or so, then the front door opens. There was my friend in work uniform staring at me like WTF. I'm like bro what did you do jump out the window? He's like WTF are you talking about? You opened the door for me, 
No I didn't, you did you said you had to shit, I wasn't here, you were, you okay, Emma sit down. So one of my best friends was monitoring me for the rest of the night to make sure I wasn't tweaking. He also asked me to come closer so I can hear better as he was talking to me. He was checking his stuff to make sure nothing was missing, that much was obvious. We are still friends today, and he brought up that incident last year, 2021, and the incident was like 2001, just to be sure. I have no explanation, dude let me into his own apartment, then same dude showed up 20 minutes later wondering how tf I got it. I'm a huge skeptic when it comes to these things. I love reading these because I'm still skeptical. But I've had a couple instances that have shaken me. The one that still makes my blood run cold was when a buddy of mine who was a former Marine found a pretty large abandoned building in a public park in upstate New York. We weren't expecting it and it was off the beaten path middle of the day. It was stable but missing large parts of the wall and we could see no one was around. It wasn't anything too exciting. Just rubble and lots of graffiti. We went to the upper floor and I noticed some satanic graffiti on a wall. Pointed it out to him and we chuckled, we're both metal heads and into the occult. Don't think anything of it. I opened a door that lead to a small office and on the wall directly in front of me is a wall to ceiling pentagram in what looked like a thick oil paint. There's no furniture or anything in this room. We both stood there for a second and as I went to take a step toward it I heard, get out, in an even but stern voice like it came from in my head. Before I knew it my friend started running in the opposite direction. I took off behind him and when we got outside he looks at me wide-eyed, and asked, did you hear it? He heard the voice too and he said it sounded like it came behind us. I've never felt anything like that and still causes goosebumps. I want to explain it away but I can't accept it in my head.